The design of the modern subway map is ubiquitous. Originating with Henry Beck's 1933 London Underground Map, the design has been imitated in transportation maps for cities around the world. The design style has also been used to create diagrams of non-geographical entities, such as maps of web pages, scientific articles, or software development projects. However, most of the maps in use were hand-created by a designer, a painstaking process that becomes more complex and time-consuming as the number of lines and stations grows. In my senior thesis, I sought to computationally generate a subway map style diagram of the courses and majors in the College of Engineering that would both reveal a way for students to map the path of their major while also seeing what majors share their required courses. There have been past work in computationally generating metro maps using the stations and lines of existing geographical maps. Many of these methods specify that no station can be connected to more than eight lines and were unsuited for my purposes. In creating my algorithm, I mainly referenced Jonathan Stott's automatic metro map layout using multi-criteria optimization, which describes criteria with which to score a potential metro map layout, and a hill climbing algorithm that utilizes that criteria. In order to computationally generate a metro map layout from the college's majors and their required courses, I began by creating an edge node graph, where the courses became the nodes of the graph, or the stations of the map, and each major became a series of edges between two nodes, or a subway line. My data for this was sourced from the University of Illinois catalog, which lists the requirement for each major. To change this abstract graph into something visual, the algorithm seeks to choose x-y coordinate points for each station so that the resulting layout resembles a classical metro map design. To give this a starting point, each station is assigned an initial pair of coordinates by applying a force-directed graph layout. The points are then iterated upon by exploring the area surrounding each station within a given radius and determining if the overall graph would look a little bit more like a metro map by moving that station to any of the surrounding points. This is determined by applying a set of six criteria. Angular resolution. Any edges or lines attached to a station should be as spread out around the circumference of the station as possible, instead of being bunched up on one side. Edge length. The length of the line segment between any pair of two stations should be approximately equal to the length of the line segments between all other pairs of stations. Balanced edge length. If a station is a part of only one line, then the length of the line segments between its preceding and following stations should be approximately equal. Line straightness. Line segments that are a part of the same subway line should be as close to being in a straight line with each other as possible. Edge crossings. Line segments should cross on top of each other as little as possible. Octilinearity. Line segments, for the most part, should be oriented horizontally, vertically, or diagonally at a 45 degree angle in order to imitate the primarily 90 and 45 degree angles in a traditional metro map. The individual criteria are given different weights in the scoring system in order to prioritize some criteria over others. The overall score of the map is then improved through repeatedly moving each station to a nearby point that produces the most ideal score. Ideally, the graph's nodes would continue to be moved until the graph's overall score does not change, letting us know that the resulting map cannot be improved further. In practice, that would take too long to calculate, so we take our final product to be the coordinates produced after 50 to 100 iterations of the algorithm. One iteration of the algorithm consists of every station in the graph having been evaluated and potentially moved once. The maps produced by this method are not likely to be as good as those created by a designer, and some minor visual tweaking is necessary for a truly beautiful diagram. Despite the need to fix visual flaws caused by elements such as the width of many parallel lines, this process is still faster and more scalable than mapping all 186 required engineering courses by hand. In terms of future work, the quality and readability of the resulting diagram might be improved by experimenting with different criteria weightings, removing or adding criteria, or by devising an initial layout format that does not use a force graph. Additionally, evaluations could be made to determine if this diagram is an effective way to describe majors and their commonalities to students, or is simply an inventive piece of artwork.